Hi guys, welcome to Comics and Chill, and today I'm going to be drawing Tetsujin Nijuhachigo, aka Giganto. Tetsujin was created by Mitsuteru Yokoyama in 1956 uh, as a manga, and uh, its creation was influenced by Yokoyama's experience of the war after seeing his home city of Kobe flattened uh, from bombings. And when he learned that the planes dropping the bombs were B-29 bombers, he said he was astonished by their destructive power and the, uh, the look of the B-29 bombers combined with uh, some German V weapons, uh, along with the story of Frankenstein, uh, actually inspired Yokoyama's creation of Tetsujin Nijuhachi Go. The manga would run for about 10 years in Shonen Magazine, with a total of 97 chapters collected into 12 Tankobon volumes. And in 1963, it was adapted into an anime series, and it was one of the first to focus on a giant robot character, which helped to begin the mecha genre in anime and manga. The anime series would be adapted for American audiences, uh, however it was retitled Giganto as Tetsujin literally translates to Iron Man. And although Tetsujin's creation predates Iron Man, Iron Man had already existed in the American market for about six months prior to the anime's localization. The anime was a hit in both Japan and America and it clearly seems to have had an influence on a few giant robot designs since then, such as Big Guy, created by Jeff Darrow and Frank Miller, uh, The Iron Giant from the movie, directed by Brad Bird, and I think that uh, Del Toro had even said that the designs had sort of influenced Pacific Rim, which is a movie I love. Uh, throughout the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, there would be three more anime series, each sporting updated designs for Tetsujin Nijuhachi Go. In 2005, there was a live action feature film produced in Japan, and the character also appeared in 2009 in several Dokomo commercials in Japan. And I think those versions look really, really cool. And there's also been a few attempts to create an American live action Giganto feature film with the Maji Studios going as far as to release um, like a teaser trailer or a sizzle reel, uh, which looked really impressive, but the company went under before they could produce the film. The character's creator, Mitsuteru Yokoyama, uh, he had a long career in manga, uh, creating a few more giant robots along the way, uh, Giant Robo and Babel 2. Um, Sadly, he passed away in 2004 due to injuries sustained during a house fire. Um, in 2009, uh, Kobe City erected an 18 meter tall statue of the character and a little museum dedicated to the work of Yokoyama. Uh, I'm yet to visit, but I would love to someday. Anyway, let's go over and take a look at the drawing of Giganto that I did. Now this was worked up in Procreate, but just like with my other uh, robot process videos, this did actually start out as a small ballpoint pen sketch, probably about an inch and a half high. Then I import this into Procreate and I start working up a more detailed sketch over the top of that. With this image, I had a pretty solid idea of how I wanted it to look. Um, I kind of wanted it to have the vibe of a little model kit. And the colors were pretty clear in my head from the get-go too, so I didn't have to worry about that too much. But yeah, I go ahead and I, I work up a full color sketch. And then I start working up a tighter sketch of Giganto, trying to lock in a rough version of every single detail that I want to include. Uh, also trying to get the proportions just right before going to work on the final line work. I started blocking in color as I went along. I'm not really sure why I did that here. Uh, maybe to mix up the process if I was getting a little bored along the way. But Giganto's color scheme is so prominent that it doesn't really require much of a second thought.
And then it was time to start the final drawing of the environment and backgrounds. And adding in the crowd. As I mentioned prior, I kind of wanted this to look like a little model set, so I was keeping that in mind when drawing these blobby little people. And lastly, I go in for the lighting and adding in some colour into the background buildings. Also, going in to draw the little details on the billboards. And finally, I overlay a sort of sepia colour and add my textures to kind of marry the whole image together. And you're done. I may also take a crack at drawing some of the um, more modern designs of this character featured in the anime from the 80s and 90s. I think some of that stuff looks really cool. But that's all I've got for you today. In the meantime, I'd like to encourage you to sign up to our newsletter so you can keep up to date with uh, some of my comic projects that I'll have coming up soon. Also, go ahead and follow us on social media. Subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy.